we're reviewing the uh, the submissions for the Match Fit Contest 2021. Uh, we had a bunch of submissions, and these are our uh, our 20 favorites. So we're going to go through them and just give you a rundown of what we like about each one. First one is A and D Woodworking. What I like about this was the fact that the Shapoko has an overhang, so the capacity of that machine extends beyond the rails there. Yeah, it was a, it was a cool application. It's not unusual to have that bit come right up to that front edge or even a little bit over, and utilizing that wasted space was a really clever idea. Uh, moving on, we've got AF Woodcraft. Yeah, coincidentally, another CNC application. Um, but I really liked the CNC spoil board using the hardware. We have that set up in our own uh, CNC in our own shop here. The thing I liked on his, rather than having the mm. ends of the spoil board open to accept the dovetails, he's got a, a slightly wider groove made so that he can drop the hardware down in and then slide it along. Really clever uh, solution to the problem there. Yeah, this is a Onefinity CNC, I believe. The Chem Action Lock that he also, you know, put it in the system. He has a couple scrap pieces that he plays between the clam and the workpiece. So I think that's a pretty good uh, idea. Barrowwood designs. I like how simple it is. It's just the one small platform for really only one use of just small parts. And it's got the one track with the one clamp right there by the blade. And it's yeah. also on an angle. Yep. It doesn't get any simpler than this, but it's, you know, it's a great little jig that does a very good job. It's awesome. It's, it's simplicity. Sometimes not overbuilding it is a good thing. Elegance in simplicity. Crisscross. Um, sure, a lot of you would, would recognize Crisscross. It seems like every day he is coming up with a new way to use the matchfit system in his shop. It's, it's fun to watch. He submitted a bunch of stuff, and I just like it all. Um, I like that it's, he's basically using it everywhere. I got to tell you, I really loved his little dovetail camera mount so that he can actually mount his camera right onto his sled or his table and, you know, his GoPro or whatever he's using and get it right in close to the cut that he's making and it all works off the same dovetail hardware. So I thought that was really clever. One of the uh, cross-cutting sled that he showed in the video, uh, it, it, it has an interesting shape. Yeah, it's uh, very interesting. Yep. All right. Next, we've got uh, Edwin Handcrafts. Um, this was a, a big winner last year. Uh, he's I like to think of him as the, the match fit mad scientist. So much creativity there. What I especially liked was um, his uh, his little router table setup that you know he's using you know upright, but then he also sets it up as a, uh, a horizontal boring thing that he's doing. Um, he was using T-Track and runners to get kind of a, a two-axis movement with, with that system so that he could get accurate um, mortises. So that was my favorite part yeah. of his submission. Yeah, it's just, and I think he called that the spider jig. The ceiling of his shop is dovetail grooves, and everything hangs from that. But he's also got a table underneath that lifts up into it. So he's got total height control from basically almost you know knee level up to above his head. It's a, it's a really, really interesting setup, and it, it's incredibly flexible looking. Next up, we have Hanson Made Woodworking, and uh, what he submitted was a, looks like a, a pretty standard 360 sled, but what I really liked about it was just the PVC pipe that he has hanging down that I, presumably is his, his dust collection, his overhead dust collection. Um, you know, they make products for that, but, you know, for you do-it-yourselfers, <laughs> I, well, that was impressive to me. Yeah, it's interesting because right at the peak of the arc of the blade, there is a tendency for dust to be spewed, you know, that's made the circle all the way around inside the gullet of the blade. And he's got that PVC pipe dialed in right there to collect that. You know, J. Pat Woodcraft. Yeah, so this is a, um, looks like a, a pretty, pretty true to form recreation of the ultimate workbench, as we call it. What actually caught my eye, though, was the, um, the upgraded router table fence that you see way in the background of the photo. That lo lo looks like uh, another dust collection uh, built into the fence. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Right? Yeah. Now, one of, the so. things, one of the things that I liked about this table is that he's got a position directly behind his saw, and it's at exactly the right height. In this case, would support both his saw and his router table. 
feet, uh, in feet on the router table and out feet on the saw. Uh, JWD. The uh, miter saw dovetail table. So I like this a lot because a lot of people will make an auxiliary platform for their miter saw, but as they change the angle and move the bevel around, um, that thing just gets all chewed up. And so what it looks like here is he's just got one cut that he's made. He keeps it at 90 degrees, and then he sets the angle of the cut that he wants with these stops and the dovetail hardware. And the other nice thing about that is the bevel on the miter saw only goes so far. I think maximum is usually like 60 degrees. Um, but by setting your angle using the stop, you can pretty much set it at whatever angle you want and be able to secure your piece there with the dovetail clamps. Usually the dovetail tracks stop at the outer edges of the table base, the base of the saw. So if you want to make a very small cut, it's a lot more difficult to do. And here he's brought that right in. So, you know, he's got the ability to cut right up, pretty much set a stop right up against where the blade's going to cut if he wants to. So it's a, it's a very nice, it's a unique uh, use of the dovetail system that we I've not seen before. Because you can literally clamp a workpiece is very, very close to the blade. And I think without this, <clears throat> you probably need to use your finger to hold that. You know, it's so tricky. close to the saw blade, and I wouldn't do it myself. You know. Matt and Max. It, it's, it's a good way to, you know, it's easy and simple way to build, and, uh, and it's very, very effective, too. But the other thing is, with when using our um, tapering, jig? tapering jig, and you want to make a longer cut than about 36 inches, an infeed table will allow you to do that, with an extension on the saw on the saw fence itself, and something like this would be ideal to do that with. Next, we have Mekinoff, and this one I just absolutely love. He, he came up with the the thought of using the uh, dovetail hardware as a locking mechanism uh, in this situation, and I think that's very brilliant. The locking mechanism, how you lock one of those things when you're using it, has always been the, the, one of the trickier parts for building one. And I think he just did a brilliant job. I'm, obviously, we're going to be very happy about people using the dovetail hardware as a lock. Mr. Severinsen. So this is, I mean, that's about that's about as simple as it gets. But I don't say I don't mean to say that like it like it's a bad thing. Um, there's there's beauty and simplicity. I think that it would be. Really interesting to see the rest of his shop, if that's the detail he goes into on a simple stop block. Yeah, that, that's a good point. That's It's indicative of uh, a lot of care going into his... Yeah, his it's simple, place. but there's a lot of care that went into making it. Yep, I think, uh, yeah, it's a simple device and uh, easy to build, easy to make. And uh, with that kind of thinking in mind, I'd love to see what else he has uh, in his shop. So, it's Mr. Good. Severinsen, when you see this, um, we're we're formally requesting a uh, a, a shop tour video. Absolutely. <laughs> Next up, we have uh, Panda Pew Pew. And I love that uh, love that handle. This one's so interesting. It's he says he's a very new woodworker. He just got into it. He's using. I don't buy the, it. Yeah, I'm, I'm questioning <laughs> it myself. He's using the zero play guide bar. He's mounted a, heavy, a fairly heavy block to it, which acts as the body of the unit, or whatever you want to call it. And then there's a sliding head that goes back and forth to adjust the position of the spline cut. It's a spline cutting jig. Like you said, Morgan, it's it's questionable. We question the, the, the claim of new woodworker because it doesn't look like that. But you know what? Being new to something gives you a fresh perspective. Like, you're thinking about how something ought to be done isn't corrupted by having been in it and for a long time and seeing other people do it a certain way. You're having to come up with a solution from scratch. So this is, you know, I've never seen anybody do a, a spline jig like this. So this next fella, uh, Past Envy, he is actually from my hometown of St. Augustine, Florida. And... In a roundabout way, sort of a family friend. I did really like his uh, his parallel edge guide for his track saw. Yeah, and, and you know, different track manufacturers make their own versions of these parallel things. 
What his has that they don't is the ability to actually clamp it directly to the sheet quickly and easily. So it's two separate units that can be, so they're small, they're easy to carry to the job site or whatever. And one of the cool parts, Henry mentioned keeping everything parallel, but as a cabinet maker, if you're doing cabinet installs or countertops and things like that, a lot of times you need a very slightly angled cut. The wall isn't perfectly straight and you've got to take a quarter of an inch more off one end than the other. These will actually let you measure and do that right off the bat. It's a, it's a very, again, a very simple, elegant design that works quite nicely. It's a minimal use of, of dovetail stuff, but he's made the most of two clamps and two pieces of hardware. All right, next up we have Peter Thomas Kennedy, and he submitted this through Facebook. I like the, the fact that he put, the, a lot of, uh, he put the, the cross dovetails at an angle. Now, he's got the long grooves there so that he could come in directly from the sides, but with this setup, he could literally clamp two separate pieces, bring them together, say, just a whisker under a half inch apart, run a router down the middle, and join those two pieces together. Next, we have Raf Z84. Okay, yeah, and this was the magnetic vice type attachment. Very interesting. I, I thought it was interesting because this would actually keep the jaws more parallel. It gives him that ability to work on top of the table. I'd love to know what it was, because usually a solution like this it, you know, stems from a particular, I can't get this quite right situation. And I'd love to know what the not quite right, the situation was that prompted him to, to, to go to making those jaws. Yeah. yeah, you know how much I love the magnets. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> and he I loves love his magnets. The magnets, you know. Loves it. It is a very, very, uh, you know, clever idea. Next, we've got Robert Gardner here, who was a big winner last year. And um, I can see that he's using a lot of the clamps that we sent him last year. And he, this year, he sent us a feature length film to review. <laughs> um, but it's 16 great minutes. Um, yes, it is. There's not a dull moment in it. He's, he's another, like a boy, I would call another uh, match fit mad scientist. Um, I'll tell you, my favorite part was I really liked the router table fences that he set up. Um, he's, he's got router lifts built into his table, his clamping, his dovetail table top. And he's using the old fashioned style, the original INCRA um, positioner system. So the beauty is that he has a fence that can be set so that the router, the, the fence is actually right over the blade, the net, or he could put it all the way on the other side of the table using the dovetail grooves, lock it in place, and then use the Incra positioner to set the exact dimension he needs. So he's basically got a conference table-sized router table. Yeah, with the, like the route say, you know, I love the, the, the router table set, uh, set up as well. It's very <laughs> unique. And, um, and uh, I also see his buildings, all these extensions on the chop saw, you know, that where he put the stop and uh, stuff like that. Uh, looks very interesting. Good job. Schwartz Brand. You can see he's using a Moxon vise with the traditional cast iron Moxon um, screws, which is kind of cool. Yep, yep. I love the idea uh, using the dovetail to work into a Moxon vise and adding the, the top dovetail slot. It really adds a lot more versatility to the mass and bikes and I think it's it's a well done design. All right next we've got my boy Sean Kirsch. He made a, uh, a base for his handheld router and a little adjustable fence so you can get a router guide to run along the edge of a part beyond the uh, the size of your base and so this allows him to set a fence and use that as an edge guide right all the way up to the bit. I thought that was a pretty Pretty interesting design. Very flexible and easy to use. Quick and easy. I like it. Yeah, it's a simple and easy to build things. It's amazing that he actually came up with that idea. I think this is a, one of the simplest idea that actually is going to work well. 
And coincidentally, Sean works for Shaper. So he doesn't even oh. he doesn't even need this. He could just program something. He would not need that, but it is a it's a very cool very cool design. All right. Next up. The handy, the handy fireman. fireman. Love this guy. It's hard not to. I mean, there's just there's so much everywhere you look in his shop are dovetail grooves. I'm curious, on the workbench there's these two black knobs uh, sticking out there and I'm, I'm wondering what those are for. So if you look at the black knobs, there's a set, the holes that the black knobs are in, then there's other holes below them. Uh -huh. That raises that piece up to become a lip, and then he drops the whole table down this way, and it becomes a, an assembly table. Ah, uh, that's clever. I like it that. He just had a really high quality of workmanship in the yep. actual design and the completion of his parts. The quality that he put into this kind of work and this is the first time actually I see a drill press table actually have a drawer I just can see you can there's so much thing you can do with this particular tables that he he has put up there I I just think it's so amazing it's just miles and miles of dovetail grooves <laughs> <laughs> now and just imagine with, if each one of those dovetail tracks that's in his shop was a T track. How many thousands of dollars do you think oh, it would cost to do that? Couldn't have done it. It's it's it never ceases to amaze me how how our customers take our ideas and just go in completely insane directions with, and just make it so much better. And last but not least, Frank, you know, the real Frank, not just any Frank. This is the real one. What interested me about this most was the fact that, yeah, putting, you know, I'm sure he's going to be putting grooves on the on the horizontal table surfaces, but he's also put two horizontal ones across the front of the tabletop, and that's going to allow him to do some pretty interesting things. It's like having, you know, an end vise all the way across the face of your, your countertop. Maybe today or yesterday I saw he posted a picture of he just got, when he got two identical routers, one to keep his relief bit in, one to keep his dovetail bit in. Um, he That's just said, dedication for you. Yeah, right. It's it's a lot of fresh idea that is even new to me, you know. So I love this kind of stuff. Thank you, guys, um, Henry, Ralph. Appreciate your time, and uh, thank you everybody thank you. for submitting all your ideas. Um, this is really incredible stuff. We just love seeing all the creativity that you guys have and. Um, Look forward to seeing all the cool stuff that you guys do with the Matchbook system in the future. So. They're the reason we're doing it. That's right.